Hello and welcome to another episode of AA Computers and Technology. Today we're going to see if a Pentium 4 processor is capable of running Blender, and if so, what exactly can we do with the Pentium 4 processor on Blender? So why am I doing this, you ask? Well, my computer upstairs, which is my main computer with a Core i7 and a GTX 660M is currently rendering an animation, which means I can't open a second instance of Blender because using it would just be too slow. So, I'm going to see if I can install Blender on this Pentium 4 machine and use it to do some design and animation. So let's get started. And here are those system specifications I promised you earlier. Um, we have a Intel Pentium 4 running at 2.6 GHz. We have 2 GB of DDR333 RAM overclocked to 400 MHz. Additionally, not on the screen, but in the system, we have a G4 6200 paired with 256 megabytes of video RAM. And the operating system is installed on a KingSpec 16 gigabyte solid state drive. And of course, Blender will also be installed on the solid state drive as well. I'm not sure if I mentioned this earlier, but I am running Xubuntu 14.04. Um, this is not going to be with the Windows version. Obviously, this is going to be with the Linux version. So I'm going to go on the Blender website, download the Linux version, uh, extract it, and then we will see if it will actually open. This is the moment we've all been waiting for. And by the way, um, this is the 32-bit version of Blender because there's really no point in downloading the 64-bit version since I only have 2 gigabytes of RAM. So let's go ahead and see if this will run. going to double-click it and cross my fingers. Actually, let's just right click and uh, execute it. How about that? And look at the wow, look at that. All right, awesome. Well, something's come up. Let's see if I can uh, get into the 3D workspace. Can I move around? Wow, look at that. It actually works. Huh. So, so far, so good. Um, what exactly can I do in the 3D workspace though? Um, as you saw earlier, I can rotate around, um, and it's actually really smooth. Let's see if I can uh, manipulate the cube. Yeah, I can uh, manipulate the cube just fine. I can move the cube around. Um, I can rotate it. Can I make it bigger? can make the cube bigger and uh, wow it's uh, working great in a minute I'm gonna try to render it and see what happens <laughs> who knows but so far I'm really impressed so now I'm gonna try to render it um, first let's go ahead and do a cycles render And you can see the hyper threading in play here. And there is our cube, which really isn't a cube anymore, it's our stretched out cube. <laughs> so uh, cycles render works fine. What about a blender render? That works even better. <laughs> So the rendering is working. How about, I wonder how well the live rendering works though. Nope, oh, it's taking quite a while. Come on, you can do it Pentium 4. I believe in you. You can do it. Oh, it has done it, well, uh, sort of. Oh, wow, all right. Yeah, you're not you're not exactly there yet. <laughs> oh, there we go. That looks more like the cube that we had. So yeah, um, live rendering. It looks like we're not really going to be able to uh, live render this cube. I'm going to go back to the solid view um, because currently the <laughs> 3D workspace is completely locked up. That's great. Okay, so we lost a rectangular prism and the cube is back. I had to close the application because it just froze. 
um, and then I reopened it. So we have Blender back, and we're gonna do some more stuff with it. Okay, so we saw that the cube itself um, in Blender performs just fine. But what happens when we add multiple objects? So uh, why don't we throw in a uh, UV sphere while we're at it? We're gonna have to move it away from the cube so we can actually see it. There's our spear. Um, why not add a, let's see, what else? Let's add a torus. All right, that's working just fine. Let's make it really big. Yeah, that looks fun, right? And then uh, as we go around, uh, Blender seems to still be functioning just fine. All right, um, I'm gonna add one more object and then we'll see how long it takes to render. Um, how about a cone? Ta-da! And yeah, so the uh, solid view is still nice and smooth. Let's render this now using the Cycles engine. And by the way, this is real time. I'm not speeding the footage up or anything like that. So this is the actual rendering speed. And there we go, it is done. I have two monitors. So what if I want to have two 3D workspaces opened at the same time? Let's just say um, on the right side, I'll have my top view and on the left side, I'll have my bottom view. Well, can the Pentium 4 handle it? I don't know, I already have the top view open on the right side, so let me just uh, orient it to the top. And then on the left side, we'll have the front view. And once again, it appears Blender is functioning just fine with the Pentium 4 processor. Both workspaces are nice and smooth. Very responsive. Um, so it appears we can have multiple workspaces opened at the same time using the Pentium 4 processor. Let's just say I'm trying to model something like a field of grass or I need to have a lot of particles. Well, can the Pentium 4 handle that? Let's see. So I'm going to go ahead and generate some particles right now. Um, let's go ahead and try a thousand on this 10 by 10 plane. Mm, I want hair particles. And let's just specify their length as I think one seems fine. So how well does that work? Um, we can move around just fine. The 3D workspace is still nice and smooth. What does it look like when rendered, I wonder? And of course, this is still a cycles render. So I'm not sure how well that's showing up on screen, but you can see the uh, hair particles on the plane right there. So, so far so good. Let's go ahead and go back into the 3D view um, and add some more particles because this doesn't look like grass. This just looks like a bunch of uh, you know, random sticks in the ground. So, let's add more particles. Number, let's try, uh, let's just say 5,000. And the 3D view is still nice and smooth. 10,000. Now that's starting to look more like a grass field. How about 20,000? Um, why don't we go ahead and add some movement to that, just for fun. I went ahead and added a vortex in so things would look a little bit more animated. So let's go ahead and see if that slows things down a bit. So as far as frames per second, we're getting about 3 frames per second right now. <laughs> and uh, trying to navigate this is kind of painful. You can see the obvious lag. It's definitely not as smooth as it was. So 
So let's stop right here and see how it looks rendered. Actually change the plain color to green so it looks a little bit more like grass. Wow, and that's taking uh, quite a long time. So our grass field is almost fully complete. And it doesn't look too bad. And of course the rendering settings are just set to the stock render settings, so um, nothing too special. Alright, so let's move on and try something else. So for our final demonstration, let's see how well Depentium 4 can handle flames. Um, I whipped up this cheesy little fire scene, there's a sphere that's actually on fire, and then there's a large cube around it that's acting as the domain for the flames. Um, so as you can see, it is definitely fairly laggy as we try to move around the scene itself. Um, let's go ahead and run the scene. We're getting about 0.5 frames per second. And you can kind of see the smoke moving. I'm going to zoom in right here. There we go. So we can see the Pentium 4 is obviously struggling with the fire animation. But I wonder how long it'll take to render this. Um, gosh, I don't even want to try because it's probably going to take forever, but why not? I'll probably end up having to um, speed up the footage and then I'll just tell you guys the actual time it took at the end because I don't want to waste a whole lot of memory. Um, so actually, why not? Let's go ahead and render this scene and see how long it takes. So we are starting rendering now. That took so long that my camera actually ran out of battery, so we only got to see half the rendering, but here is the fully rendered scene right there. You can see the white spear and then the flames around it. And in all, if I can get close enough, that actually took 24 minutes to render that one frame. Imagine trying to render a full animation on this. Oh, it would take forever. I don't know about you, but I had a lot of fun with that little experiment. And I was really surprised of how well the Pentium 4 handled Blender. Now obviously it does have its limitations, um, especially you saw the limitations with this fire animation. Some things the Pentium 4 processor just isn't going to be able to handle. But the basic stuff such as text animation, um, basic shape animation, even the particles, um, the Pentium 4 can handle pretty well. I'm going to go ahead and end it here. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please feel free to leave a comment. Don't forget to like this video, and please do not forget to subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in my next video.